camera to speak with some, uh, a lot of individuals that you can't see on your screen. So thank you all very much for joining us today. We'd like to talk, uh, start with um, welcoming some new board appointees. Um, these appointees are Debbie Hackman, Craig, I apologize if I mispronounce your name, I'm going to guess Lutz, or Lutz, um, Andrew Noonan, and Sandra Whitehead. Welcome, we appreciate your interest and your commitment to serving on the board, and we thank you. The um, next item on the agenda, we do have two um, board members who will be leaving the board, and uh, most sincere thanks goes out to both Professor Harvey Abramowitz from Purdue University, and um, I believe it's Dr. G. Chen from IUPUI. Um, we as board, board members would like to thank you and from the bottom of our hearts for your efforts and your commitment to this program. Um, Harvey, we've served on this board together for well over 10 years, probably closer to 15. So thank you very much. Um, now, in an effort to ensure everyone knows who is on the, the call and get a little bit of background, I will start off by introducing myself and my background in the industry. And we would like to go around and have each board member introduce themselves to those who are in the gallery that are not uh, members of the board. Again, my name is Bruce Burrow. I've been in the waste and recycling industry for a little over 30 years. I'm currently an employee of Rumkey Waste and Recycling. And based out, we have an office in Columbus, Indiana, and my office is in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, I've been um, blessed by chairing a, a wonderful group of individuals. And I think next we can move on to Mr. Gratz. Good morning, uh, Matt Gratz. Um, I've been with the city of Fort Wayne um, for over 20 years now. I manage the garbage and recycling contracts for the city. Um, and I've basically been there uh, all 20 years, so I've been in the waste industry for over 20 years. And um, I think that's, that's pretty much uh, uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, Tara, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, yeah. Good morning. Uh, my name is Tara Wessler Henry. Um, I am stationed in Connorsville, Indiana. I work for the Indiana State Department of Agriculture. I am on the board as an ag kind of representative. Um, I cover the southeast part of the state. I've worked for the state now for almost 15 years. Um, my husband and I also farm in the area. And um, this will be my starting my second term here with the uh, recycling board. I'm still green, understanding some of the terminology. So I do a lot of Google searches and YouTube videos just to try to learn some of these. I'm going through the grants. Um, and I appreciate always having the tours that we ha uh, have the opportunity to go on as board members. Um, that really helps me out a lot. So glad to be here and good to see everyone's faces. Thanks, Tara. Um, Kelly Weger. All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Kelly Weger, and I'm with Purdue Manufacturing Extension Partnership. I manage all of our sustainability programs. We do training and consulting uh, throughout the state of Indiana. Uh, prior to that, I worked as a registered architect in the state of Michigan and uh, specialized in sustainable building design and moved down here to Indiana about seven years ago when I joined Purdue. And I've been on the board here for six years. I'm not exactly sure how long. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kelly. Um, Dr. Ji Chen.
Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jay Chen. I'm the uh, chair of the Department of Mechanical and uh, Energy Engineering at IUPUI. Um, I, it has been great five years uh, working with this group and um, learn a lot. And also, I really enjoy working with this group to help the uh, decision making on certain kind of uh, like uh, the, the grant distributions. And uh, so, so I really uh, like this group and uh, I wish well for this group. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Harvey Abramowitz. Is he on here yet? We may have to move on and Harvey didn't mention he might be, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> a few minutes late. Okay. Um, let's go ahead and do quick introductions of the new board members um, to that. Um, they'll be observing today. They will not be voting, but we are definitely wanting to welcome them to the uh, board. Uh, Sandy, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Sandy Whitehead. I'm the director at the Dearborn County Solid Waste Management District. I've been the director for almost five years and I have three other years experience here as the educator and um, another uh, waste and recycling type uh, job that I've had is I worked for Rumpke for four years. So I have private and public experience. So I'm very pleased to be on the board. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Andrew Noonan. Oh, you're still on mute, Andrew. Hey, sorry about that, guys. Hey, good morning. My name is Andrew Noonan. I'm with Electronic Recyclers International. I've been with them for about eight years. I started out with their Holliston, uh, Massachusetts facility, then moved back to Indiana about five years ago to run their Plainfield facility. I'm honored to uh, be paired up with you guys. I worked with you guys on a grant not too long ago and uh, appreciate the uh, opportunity to be able to give back what you guys have been given to us to help other companies and help the state. So thank you all for uh, welcoming me aboard. Thanks. Thank you. Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie Hackman. Um, I'm the director of the Jackson County Solid Waste Management District. I've been here for 12 years. Uh, before that, I was educator for nine years. And in between those two um, responsibilities, I work for the city of Seymour and uh, I manage the recycling facility for Rumkey in Louisville. I serve as an advisor for the Association of Solid Waste Districts, and I'm the um, Indiana representative to the uh, Solid Waste Association of North America's um, advisory board. Um, I also serve as a technical advisor for the Indiana Rural Community Assistance Partnership um, in the solid waste areas. So um, thank you very much for welcoming me on the board. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, and is Craig Lutz available? Did he, was he able to log in? Uh, you, uh, this is, this is Craig. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. So I'm, I am mobile, so I'm on my cell phone. So that's where, um, but yeah, uh, Craig Lutz, I, I've been with Republic Services for going on 18 years now, um, based here in the Indianapolis market, uh, support the uh, central Indiana, uh, north central Indiana, and then northeast and Bryan, Ohio um, markets for uh, Republic Services. So um, honored and, and appreciate uh, being on, being uh, appointed to, to this board. Excited. Thanks, Craig. I do also want to recognize, and if um, they are on the call, if they would want to say a quick introduction, our non voting members as well. Um, we'll start with Julia Wickard. Good morning, Julia Wickard. I serve as the Assistant Commissioner and the Agricultural Liaison at the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. Um, I have a report in just a few moments, so I will yield the rest of my time. Um, and then we have um, Senator Jean Burrow. Yes, good morning. This is uh, my representation. Um, it's, it's a bit early, so I love Zoom that I could be at a meeting, but um, 
you know, you don't have to see my hair and my robe and my, <laughs> but anyway, um, it's, it's nice to be with everyone. And I want to say, I'm sorry, we're losing uh, Professor Abramowitz. He's been a, a great member of this board and um, I'm sorry to see him go. He's contributed quite a bit, but I, I, it sounds as though we have quite, quite a few other folks who can step up and fill his shoes. Um, but um, I, I think we have a lot to talk about, especially the October 4th um, uh, meeting at the State House. So um, I hope we'll get that uh, discussed today. Thanks very much. Thank you. Senator Brian Buchanan. There. Oh. Brian, you got muted again. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Great. Brian Buchanan serving in the Indiana State Senate and uh, glad to be with you this morning. Thank you. Representative Sue Arrington. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad <laughs> to be here. <laughs> um, I um, am the representative for House District 34. Uh, that's Muncie. Uh, I'm also on the Environmental Affairs Committee and the Interim Committee that's going to be hearing uh, our uh, information about the, uh, uh, the project we're working on to bring Indiana's infrastructure and our needs uh, before the General Assembly. So I am not in the um, environmental field professionally, but I have learned a lot uh, on this committee. So I'm really, really glad I am serving on this board. Thank you. We're happy to have you on it as well. And lastly, I'm not sure if uh, she was able to attend either, but we have Representative Donna Shabley. Shabley, sorry about that. Hi everyone, yeah, I'm here. Uh, <laughs> District 24, which is Western Hamilton and Southeastern Boone, I'm the state representative there. I've enjoyed sitting on the board. I've learned a lot from everyone and I am a supporter of recycling and the efforts that you all are putting forward. Thanks for uh, everybody being here this morning. Thank you everybody for the introductions and everybody who serves on our board. I really do appreciate that the work you, you do to help further um, recycling in Indiana. Indiana, we may uh, need to pause a bit because I believe we skipped Mr. Garrett. Oh no, <laughs> thank you for keeping me on track. <laughs> I don't know how I did that, Terry. Uh, well, I'm not, I'm not sure <laughs> how. I'm not sure how to raise my hand anyway. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I really couldn't find the uh, raise your hand uh, feature that you were talking about. So is it in the chat? Um, Art? You know, I, the chat it's in the participants. Yep. Go to participants. Oh, okay. Good morning, Harvey. Yeah, good morning. I just joined. Uh, yeah, I'm Ter Terry Guerin and, and like Bruce and, and uh, Harvey, I've been around for a long time, uh, at least 30 years. And uh, I am Vice President of Corporate Governmental Affairs for Azo Services out of Michigan. And I'm in charge of uh, Governmental Affairs in Indiana, Kentucky, and solid waste uh, issues. Uh, we own locally in Indiana, three landfills. And uh, uh, I don't know, or 12 transfer stations. Uh, and I've been with uh, with Azo now for, for almost 20 years. Uh, I'm a past chairman of the Indiana chapter of the National uh, Waste and Recycling Association. And I just finished uh, a term as chairman of the board of the National uh, Board of Governors of that same organization. So I'm, I'm beginning my second term on the board and I'm pleased to be with all of you. Thank you, Terry. And then Harvey did join us. So let, Harvey, could you do a quick introduction of yourself as well? Hey, I'm Harvey Romwitz. I'm a professor of mechanical engineering at Purdue University Northwest. I've been involved on, I guess, the second board I've been involved in since we uh, serving for two governors. And, uh, you know, I'm pleased to have served all this time. And I'm sorry to uh, be leaving you all after this. I guess this is the last meeting, right, Dina? 
Deanna? Yes, yes, and, and, and <laughs> I'm so sorry, Harvey, you missed it. We, we shared a, a, some recognition of you already. Um, apologize okay. for that. That's okay. I, I, will, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we definitely appreciate your time on the board. Senator Burrow also mentioned um, um, she will definitely miss you and your uh, valuable insight on the board as well. All right, thank you. I would like to extend also thanks to uh, Ms. Pat Daniel, uh, Mr. Tom Lease, um, all the support that we get from staff at IDEM in their review and their guidance is greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. Okay. Um, next um, order of business is the consideration and approval of the minutes of the March 12th, 2020 RMDB uh, meeting. Has everyone had a chance to review the uh, minutes that Deanna has sent out to all the board members? Yes. Um, yes. So um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of that meeting? This is Kelly. I'll make a motion to approve the meetings. We have a motion by Ms. Weger. Do I have a second? I second. This is Ji Chen. Um, we have a second by Dr. Chen. Thank you. Um, any discussion? Um, we can, how will we do this, Deanna? Roll call vote? Um, um, yeah, let's do a roll call vote. All right. Um, Mr. Gratz. Yes. All right, Ms. Henry. Yes. Um, let's see, we have Mr. Guerin. Yes. And Mr. Abramowitz. Yes. Ms. Weger. Yes. And Mr. Chen? Yes. <clears throat> have I missed anyone? You have not. Um, with that, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Um, next item on the agenda is an, an update on the Indiana Department of Environmental Management. It's, um, Julia Wickard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. And it's great to hear from everyone. And um, Love that we have attendees and um, on the call as well. Again, my name is Julia Wickard and I serve as the Assistant Commissioner and the Agricultural Liaison here in the Office of Program Support at IDEM. And so I have a few updates I um, just want to share. I thought I'd start with, uh, start with the, the gorilla in the room and that's the budget. Um, you know, I think we're all kind of feeling effects in our professional and personal lives um, since February, and when I think back to February and um, our early board meeting in 2020, where we were talking about um, giving us all the opportunity to meet virtually, and then how we have uh, certainly transitioned to um, doing a complete meeting, um, public meeting virtually through Zoom. So technology is our friend. Um, it, it works, and it's allowed us to stay connected, which is uh, so important in these um, times. And so it's really good to see all of you. Um, certainly, I want to echo the sentiments um, of the chairman and um, others that have shared. And we really appreciate um, our retiring board members and appreciate your leadership, what you have done for this board, where you, where you have brought this board, and um, this kind of the springboard, if you will, for our new board members and our reappointed board members. So I just wanna say thank you as well. So just um, some updates on budget from IDEM. Um, obviously it's extremely tight. This is a legislative um, budget year. As we look to 2021 and our uh, state representatives and state senators can certainly speak to this more, uh, more nobly than me. But um, at this time, we are not hiring any staff at the Department of Environmental Management. 
unfortunately, and I'll knock on uh, this laminate wood in front of me, um, fortunately, our team has not uh, seen um, retirements or folks leave the agency, but across um, the agency, um, in early February, we were at 807 employees, and today we're at 782 employees. So we have not hired, um, and at this point, we are not planning to hire. That's a, the commissioner's directive to senior staff. So a lot of uh, folks are having to pick up and do the work of um, others. Um, from the state budget agency, we were given the directive to cut our um, budgets 15%. And so we have done that um, it's extremely tight as we look at this fiscal year. Um, you know, we're, we're certainly looking, I'm looking every day for ways to meet our budgetary needs as we kind of think through the balance of this fiscal year and um, anticipate potentially what the legislature may do in the long session um, for the biennium budget. So we're kind of in a wait and see period to see what happens there. So in working with the state budget agency, um, the decision was made um, by the commissioner to reduce grant funding for the Recycling Market Development Board uh, from the $2 million to $1 million. And I know Deanna has done a great job of communicating that all to you. So I know that's not a surprise. Um, this is for the fiscal year 21 grant cycle that we're gonna talk about today. Um, we do, please, we do believe this is probably the best decision, the most prudent decision, gonna given the financial situation that our state um, government is in. And so at this point and kind of moving forward for this meeting, um, the $1 million is what we will have to um, allocate for the grants that we're gonna talk about today. Um, I'm very disheartened that we don't have the 2 million, um, but we are fortunate to uh, have retained the $1 million. And if we're just, um, as um, those board members that have been on the board for a period of time, you know that $2 million just came to us um, in the last year. So um, I'm glad that we have $1 million to uh, distribute um, to some very noble projects that we're gonna talk about. Um, we also um, just trying to be prudent and think um, kind of conservatively about kind of where the state is we have suspended the community recycling grant program that we launched last year. I use the word suspended because um, I am not um, one to say that we're ending it. Um, my, my plan is to uh, be knocking on Bruno's door and Brian Rockensuis, our chief of staff's door later this year um, and early next year to, to talk about kind of where we are financially um, and hopefully can um, reinvigorate that um, grant program that was helping so many nonprofits, educational institutions, and um, solid waste management districts. So I want you all to know I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my part um, on your behalf to make sure um, that we don't lose that program because I know how important it is in, uh, in Indiana. A couple other updates I just wanna share with you from IDEM is we are planning an electronic recycle day or days. Um, we're planning to do this at the government center complex here downtown. It's really for um, state employees, but it will be open to anyone. Um, we have work, we're working with technology recyclers here in Indianapolis. And um, on November 10th and on November 12th, two days from 7 a.m. to 12 noon each day, um, we are actually going to have a drive through um, electronic um, recycling event. So if you're familiar with downtown and West Street and the Government Center Complex, um, between the Government Center North and the Government Center South, um, there's a turnaround, there's a, a it's called Governor Orr Plaza. And so folks can come in off of West Street and we'll be able to um, dispose of in a recycling effort, their electronics. We also will be taking televisions as we know, those are very hard to dispose and, and recycle of. Um, there is a fee for those, but that's the only fee. And uh, Technology Recyclers is going to be doing that. So we're really excited to partner with them um, for this event. We're, we're starting the publicity and outreach on this. 
and we're hoping to uh, have a great event. Also, some of you might have been a part of our first ever um, all virtual pollution prevention um, conference that was held last week where we had the conference and a trade show. Uh, we actually uh, recognized six recipients of the Governor's Awards for Environmental Excellence. They actually will be here on Monday as well. Uh, we've been able to secure an, an opportunity for a photo with the Governor um, on September 28th. So those six recipients will be here um, in the State House to um, have a photo taken with the Governor for this highest environmental award. And then we also inducted six new Partners for Pollution Prevention um, members, which is um, unheard of where we've done that many at one time. We've had a lot of interest during this COVID period. And so I guess that's the silver lining, right? So we're always trying to find those silver linings. And so we had a lot of interest and we're able to induct six new members. We had an incredible um, army, incredible team behind the scenes of the IDEM staff that actually put on that conference and working very uh, collaboratively with our Partners for Pollution Prevention Executive Committee. Um, but it was a great event. And I would say that if you have events um, that you're holding virtually and you're using platforms like Zoom or Remo or Hey Summit, uh, we have some expertise in house that uh, we probably could um, assist you with. Also, I wanna let you know that um, our environmental education has kind of morphed into virtual learning as well. Um, you know, when, uh, when the early days of COVID were here, um, that was about the time with Earth Day and our Earth Day presentations where we are in um, a lot of school systems across the state and those were all closed and stopped. And so we've had to kind of reinvent ourselves on environmental education. And so our team is in the process of doing that as well. We've held some virtual classroom discussions even yet this week, and we're looking at ways to even broaden that more. So if you have, um, if you know of teachers or you know of people that would like some environmental education curriculum uh, brought into um, kind of their venues, let us know and we can certainly do that. So just, uh, just let us know and we'll make that happen. Um, and then um, I know many of you are familiar with our CTAP group, our Compliance and Technical Assistance Program. Um, for the last eight months or so, we have been working on a new database to, uh, that is uh, it's very user friendly, it's customer facing, it's going to be very accessible, and most importantly, it remains and will be always confidential. So um, it will be on our website where um, interested um, organizations, individuals, businesses can click into that portal and can uh, request consultation and information. And we're very close to going live. I would say by early next week, it will be live. Um, our staff has been completely trained in this new system and we're excited because we have not been able to really generate the kind of reports and metrics that we wanted to be able to do. And with this new system, we're going to be able to do that. So in terms of getting information to our legislature, um, to um, other entities or stakeholders that might want to know um, what our CTAP group is doing, I'm excited about this new um, database that we've been working on and I'm very feel very blessed that we've been able to make that happen. Um, and then the, the last couple things um, is we are planning to do an E101 session, which is really a webinar. Um, we're planning to do this virtually yet this year. And so we just ask that you to look for information. We'll have Deanna help push it out to um, each, of, um, each of you so you're aware when we hold those webinars of environmental um, policy kind of updates and we kind of choose a topic and then really expand and take a deep dive into it. So we're excited that we'll be able to provide and, and bring that to citizens in Indiana yet this year. Um, I believe Senator Bro talked about our October 4th Environmental Affairs, um, the Summer Study Committee meeting is meeting. Uh, Representative Gutwein is chair and we have been in touch with him and the Legislative Services Agency 
we are planning a presentation um, to the Environmental Affairs Summer Study Committee, um, providing a, an update on recycling and um, most importantly, uh, kind of where we are with our recycling study that GT Environmental is conducting for us. And I know um, we're gonna hear from them in just a couple minutes, as soon as I'm finished, kind of where things are with that study. And we'll be able to bring um, those findings thus far um, to our members of the legislature during that summer study committee. So we're excited about that. And then I wanna be, um, one as well, Bruce, and I thank you for doing it, is recognizing our staff. Um, our staff has worked um, tirelessly, Deanna specifically, um, Tom a lot behind the scenes, as you know, that's where Tom likes to be, um, Pat shepherding and leading to prepare for today's meeting to provide you the best information to make the best decisions with the dollars that we have to allocate. And so um, a special thank you to Deanna, Pat, and Tom for the work you've done to prepare the board for today. And uh, I'd say let's get started. Any questions? Thank you very much, Ms. Lee. Yeah. I do have a question. Um, thank you for your report, Julia. I think it was very comprehensive and I really admire the item staff for being able to continue um holding up the fort uh even though you've got reduced numbers i i know you had a lean item had a lean staff to begin with so i compliment everybody that's in there working um i was very disappointed to hear that our grant recycling budget has been reduced in half and i have a question about that uh, isn't it a non-reverting uh, fund, and aren't we still uh, bringing in money for it? So I, I guess I'd like to know a little more about why it was um, cut in half. I believe the commissioner's decision for doing that was just from the standpoint that you know, we've had to look across the board and um, the direct direction we received from the state budget agency was um, reductions in all of our funds. And so at this time, really the decision was made to just, you know, reduce it to 1 million in consultation with the governor's office. So that is what I'm aware of at this point, um, Representative Arrington. Um, I, I feel your pain. I went to bat for it several times um, because um, yeah, because those monies are um, are dedicated. But at this time, that that was the decision that was made. Thank you. One thing I, I do want that I failed to share is um, at our early February. I think our next meeting in or our first meeting in 2021 will be on February 4th, and I've asked our um, chief financial officer to provide the board with a comprehensive update um, on our budget and where funding is and all of our funds. So we will have that on February 4th, just so you're aware. Um, may I follow up with Senator, uh, excuse me, Representative Arrington? Yes, go ahead, Senator. Um, first of all, I, I too want to express my disapp disappointment at the reduction of the budget. Um, where does that one million that is not placed in the fund, where, what happens to it? I believe at this point, and maybe Pat may want to chime in, but it's my understanding that it, it remains there. It's, it hasn't left the fund. Um, I think the, the thought is that at this point, we would just kind of put a hold on that and we would um, just allocate the $1 million for this fiscal year funding cycle. Okay, so it's not going to go back into your operation budget or be redirected elsewhere. It's going to remain in the fund. It's just a frozen, as has as all the monies was before we got the additional one million added to the budget. So it's just going to be frozen dollars. That is my understanding, Senator Bro. Okay, all right. Um, also, I'm sorry, I missed the details and you don't have to go through all of them. We can talk offline if necessary, but what is the program that was suspended and what are the dollars in that program? It is our community recycling grant program and we had um, appropriated, allocated $500,000 for that program. Um, 
at Pat Daniel, who is um, the manager of that particular section of our team, knows that we worked very closely with um, the commissioner. To, I, I wanted at least something to be able to be utilized, but at this point, the decision was made, um, and I respect it to actually just continue to, fr to freeze that fund at this point, and then we'll reevaluate re it later this fall, early 2021. With, hope, with the hopes of uh, being able to do some kind of a community recycling grant program yet this fiscal year. Okay, so again, those dollars remain in the community recycling program fund. They are not being redirected or uh, reverted back. That is my understanding, yes. Okay, if your understanding of this changes at any time, will you let us know? Yes, and I think that would be a, a conversation that is certainly Grant Geis, who is our CFO in February. Um, I, I think these are all questions that he could assist with, but as he um, kind of manages, as you know, um, the financials for the entire agency, but absolutely, if we learn more, we will certainly communicate it. Um, I, I've written just a couple more questions, so, so indulge me, please. You talked about the highest environmental award that the folks receive that are coming in to get photos with the governor. Do we know where those um, folks reside? Is it possible to get uh, location so those of us who rep represent them or who may represent them can send them letters of congratulation? Yes, we issued a press release. And so um, I can get that to Deanna and she can disseminate that out to everyone. So it does have the locations um, of those members. So certainly we would be glad to share that um, with the board and particularly um, our four legislative members. I always like to congratulate folks who may live in my district. Um, Absolutely. Makes sense. The uh, CTAP, um, that is a database. And, and what, kind of, what kind of data will be collected there? Well, we currently have a database. It's basically a very simplified Excel um, spreadsheet that was just not capable of keeping up with the kind of data we were collecting. As the CTAP um, group is confidential. Um, that's what we really pride ourselves on with that program because um, individuals, businesses, organizations can reach out to us confidentially and request and seek guidance on environmental regulations. So that database is basically um, separate from IDEM. Um, it's confidential where it will house that particular um, entities information that they request as well as the recommendations that are provided and then ultimately without providing any proprietary information we will be able to generate reports based upon the kind of information that is sought from organizations in Indiana so we are better equipped to make sure that we have um, the talent and skills on staff to address those issues so it's, it's a robust database I would hope and would encourage our staff um, to, as we do legislative reports to you and your colleagues, that maybe that is something we could report on next year um, as we see um, some benefits from it. Okay, yeah, um, I, I still don't really know who, who receives the reports, but that's okay. My, my very last question, Julian, I promise this is my last, um, uh, the October 4th meeting. Do you, have you been? Um, October 5th. I'm sorry, it's October 5th. Sorry. <laughs> yes, October 5th. I apologize. Yep. Um, have you been working with LSA and do we have folks that, I know IDEM will testify. Is that the only um, body that will testify or will there be um, members of the uh, recycling industry that will testify or have you been, have you gotten all that sort of nailed down for us? Yes, from what I understand, they're wanting to limit um, speakers. So I believe there are two items on the agenda that day. One is um, kind of an update from IDEM, from our chief of staff, to talk about our COVID plans and the things we have done, the, the metrics that we've met and that kind of thing. And then also this recycling study and an update on recycling. So I believe those are the two items. And yes, I've been working with Craig Mortel at LSA to um, put that together plan to have a PowerPoint presentation that will be shared. And um, it's my understanding that um, Brian Rockensus and myself will be in the Senate chamber with 
the members, and then there will be another room um, where attendees uh, from the public can um, and will be placed. So that's what I understand at this point. And so we are, uh, we are putting those final touches on that presentation and actually meeting following today's meeting um, once we have a little bit more information from GT Environmental um, to uh, fine tune that so it will be ready for delivery to you and your colleagues. Okay. All right. Very good. And, and I am sorry to hear that you've lost uh, so much staff, but thank you for all that you do. And I, I'm, I'm uh, going to put myself on mute now. You're fine. We appreciate your questions. They're important. Thank you. And Julia, we have a, a two people with their hand raised. Terry Guerin raised his hand first. Okay. I, I just want to share my concern uh, that was raised by the legislators concerning the loss of that million dollars. Um, I don't understand if it's still there in the fund, why it couldn't have continued to be allocated. I'm always kind of suspicious when things like this happen. And Julia, I appreciate all the efforts that you made to try to save that million dollars. But that fund, the money for that fund comes from landfills, a fee per ton, 50 cents per ton. Right. And I'm concerned that Governor Daniels, a few years ago, in a time of need, I think it was about 10 or 11 million dollars that he took from that fund. Uh, there wasn't anything illegal about it. Um, but as you said, that's a dedicated fund. Uh, and that 11 million dollars went to cover general fund expenses. And since this is a dedicated fund and it continues to grow every year, and <laughs> I do know that some of the monies from that fund uh, help IDEM expenses, which is justified. Um, I, I, I just don't understand why that million dollars had to be taken away. Appreciate your concern. Still there. Appreciate that. I, I think again, you know, as we uh, as we kind of move forward with um, kind of our situation in state government in general, I think. Again, having that conversation with our CFO in early 2021 will be important. So appreciate your concerns and they're duly noted. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Julia. We also have a hand raised by uh, Harvey Abramowitz. Okay. Hi, uh, thank you, Terry, for raising that issue. I was gonna raise the same question. So I'm just gonna follow up a little bit more. Is the amount of money going into the funds that, that does come from the landfills. Has that decreased because of the COVID or is it we at the same level as it was before? We have no idea how much money is coming in. That can make a difference on how much they want to allocate. Terry, I mean, just for, from your question, but uh, how much is coming in? Is it different from, from the past? My, I mean, my understanding has gone down. The offices are closed, so there's less coming in maybe from, from the commercial side. Any ideas? I know, I know that uh, at least from residential uh, uh, customers, the amount is going up. <laughs> well, I, I would assume residential is going up, but commercial could be going down, like office buildings and things like that. I, I you know, would, the paper I would that's so. coming out. Harvey, uh, uh, the, our Office of Land Quality does get um, those reports of tonnage um, for the landfills. So we can look into that and just follow up a little bit. Because that can make a difference. I'm just following up on what Terry said. The the amount mm -hmm. of money actually, this, this goes back to when that, those millions of dollars were taken for the general fund that caused, at that, po at that point, there were people on the board that resigned because of that issue. So um, if you just let, let, it, let it put a little history into the discussion about what happened in the past. And uh, I mean, Bruce was there, Terry was there, I was there, right? So we've all been through that. And uh, I guess we don't want to see that happen again. Thank you. Thank you. None of us. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other questions? I think no, we can... one, one thing I would like to say is that I believe our program has a much stronger support um, from Mr. Bruno Piggott um, than his predecessor. And I trust that you know, the, the program itself will continue and those monies will still be available moving forward. Obviously, Julia's 
uh, in working with budget. You know, there are spendable dollars and there's dollars that are in the fund. And I don't want to try to be an accountant or anything like that. But Terry, you've been in business long enough to know. Um, sometimes we have to spendable dollars from one category to another if needed. And it may just be a backstop in case we need additional funds, spendable dollars in for, you know, public services, police, fire, those type of uh, needs. So I trust in, in uh, Commissioner um, and I believe we will have his full support moving forward. Well, we did, we did ask, we did ask for, I think it was two years ago, an accounting from IDEM as to uh, what was happening with that money. And uh, IDEM uh, did provide a, a wealth of information as to what the status of those funds were at that point in time mm -hmm. and where they were going. And um, so we can just keep a handle on what, what the uh, level of the balance of that fund is now. And then Julia, if you can just kind of watch that carefully again over the next year and see what happens to it. it should go I, up. I will. And um, our, our plan for our new CFO will be to update all of you. And we have, we'll have several new board members um, that will be active um, to provide that very comprehensive overview of kind of where our budget is and where these funds and um, these particular dedicated dollars are actually located. So we will do that at our February meeting. Thank you, Julia. Mm -hmm. Thank you very uh, much. The next item on the agenda is a status update of existing grants and Ms. Garner will provide us with that information. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, yes. Um, our last fiscal year 19 grant with the electronics recyclers um, did a wrap up a couple months ago. They uh, built and purchased a um, recycling mobile shredder unit for electronic waste. So we're really excited for that project to really start getting out um, to different offices and other places. Um, and we think it's a, a very interesting opportunity. I was able to um, join them virtually since uh, this was right in the middle <laughs> of COVID spread um, uh, and see how the new trailer works. And it's very interesting and a uh, very little neat operation there. Um, fiscal year 20 grants are um, mostly in progress. We have seven in progress. We did have one company, O'Brien Barrel Company, that um, declined the grant funding as we were working on their finalizing their grant agreement. Um, that was when COVID hit and they had to drastically change their budgets um, and project focus. So they are no longer pursuing that, that project at this time. And then um, we have two additional grants that are almost complete. Um, Rumpke, their Medora um, facility transfer station uh, will actually be finishing up work next week. So um, Tom and I will be scheduling a site visit at the beginning of October to visit that facility and they're hoping to do a big uh, press conference out there by the end of October. And um, Warren County Solid Waste Management District, they purchased their glass pulverizer. Um, and we also, if the board recalls, they, they applied the year before but did not receive funding for the building, a brand new building to put that glass pulverizer in. So Tom and I were able to go out there and visit them a couple of weeks ago. And it's a, a very nice facility. Uh, they have a drive-through indoor uh, drop-off for um, recycling items that are source separated. It was uh, very clean, very well operated. Um, you could tell that it was much appreciated by the citizens there. Their glass pulverizer um, was working great, it was doing a great job, um, just added another um, material that they can process um, there and be able to market themselves. Um, so I, that was a, a really nice facility to see. Um, that covers our, um, our traditional recycling um, 
grants. And then uh, the other grant that we have out is, of course, with GT Environmental on the Indiana Recycling Infrastructure and Economic Impact Study. And I invited Dan Grader, who is the uh, lead on that project with GT Environmental, to speak and update the board on their progress. Okay, can everybody see me? Okay, thank you, Deanna and board. I um, appreciate the opportunity to provide an update on the project. Um, the project started in June, that's when the agreement was started, and we began reaching out to various stakeholders, um, including uh, IRC uh, and the Indiana Solid Waste Management Districts. We had a couple meetings with them, and also uh, the Recycling Partnership, and we also met with Retrack, and then we had numerous meetings over the summer with IDEM and IUPUI to, uh, to set the project up. Uh, okay, so where we're at right now is with IUPUI, we set up uh, seven regions in, in Indiana, and we're working with Adam Eckert, uh, professor at IUPUI, and Suzanne Lupton. And the way we're setting this up is with those seven regions, uh, we have seven graduate students that are responsible for each of those, those regions. And uh, that's through Adam Eckert's uh, graduate class. And then within those regions, we have approximately 40 undergrads, uh, you know, evenly distributed throughout those seven regions to support the graduate students. Um, and so how we're administering this is we have weekly meetings. Uh, in fact, we had one last night with the, uh, with the grad students. And right now where we're at is uh, all the undergrads and grad students are working on the surveys. Uh, we're sending out, uh, we just got done or we're in the process of finishing up, sending out uh, surveys to all the solid waste districts. And I'll be happy to report that we've already started receiving some back. Uh, we'll probably send out approximately 68 to 70 uh, district surveys. And again, those should be out this week. Uh, next week, we're gonna be following up with uh, surveys to the cities and towns uh, throughout uh, Indiana. Uh, and we expect approximately, it could be upwards of 500 surveys uh, to that group as well. And so what we're trying to do is these surveys are pretty comprehensive. Uh, we worked closely with IDEM to create these surveys to make sure we capture the data that we need uh, for the project and also for the economic analysis piece. Um, it, it goes into a lot of detail uh, and we really appreciate the district's uh, responses uh, and cooperation you know, with, with these surveys and, and as well the cities and towns. And then uh, ultimately, we're going to be uh, surveying probably within the next couple of weeks the uh, manufacturing and processing organizations uh, in Indiana. So, I, it, it is a, a large; it's a very big task. Uh, we do have uh, a significant amount of of student uh, horsepower, uh, and so our goal is to uh, maximize that. I I am impressed with the graduate students. Uh, we, we don't meet with the undergrads. That's, we've kind of left it so that the grad students facilitate and run their regions. Um, so we work closely with them. Uh, I also have two staff members that have been assigned uh, two or th uh, three or four each. Uh, one has three, one has four regions. So these staff members are directly responsible to help and assist the grad students uh, in, in these tasks. So, um, we have all the databases set up and as the surveys come in, we allocate the information or we provide the information to the grad students and then they uh, populate their databases. So um, we have a work plan set up uh, for the entire semester uh, with goals and deliverables during the, uh, during the semester. So, uh, you know, we're, we're right in the thick of that. So um, that's, that's where we're at as of right now. Uh, does Deanna, does anyone the board have any questions on the project? Um, I don't see any hands raised. Would the board like to ask any questions of Dan right now?
believe not. Thank you, Dan. Yes. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, this is Julia Wickard. Um, so do you feel like we are on track with our timeline, um, kind of where things are from a timeline standpoint? Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yes. Um, when we set the work plan up, we al allocated some cushion time at the end. So to help us in case we get a little bit behind, I'd say we're pretty much on time. Um, you know, I think one of the biggest challenges of a project like this is getting uh, organizing by everybody, you know, as far as the students and so on. Um, so we set, for instance, the district surveys, we set a date of October 1st for responses. And, uh, you know, again, we're already receiving some of those responses back. Um, for the districts, we expect a high um, response rate. Um, the cities will, will hope to get a lot of that information back, uh, you know, in the middle of October. And then we hope, and then you got to remember when you do a survey like this, you're, you're continuously working, uh, collecting the data. So, you know, we'll, we'll send those surveys again, the districts, we hope by early October to get the vast majority of them, maybe collecting a few stragglers, uh, middle of October, the cities, middle of October, hopefully the majority of it. And again, catching some of the stragglers towards the end of October and the businesses we're going to start, uh, you know, early October and hopefully by early November have a lot of the businesses responses by then. So at that point, then they'll be, uh, you know, uh, aggregating the data, comparing it to the retract data that IDEM provided. Um, we're using 2019, which is, we're lucky that uh, 2019 was unaffected by the uh, uh, COVID pandemic. Um, and, uh, you know, I will say too that uh, you know, while I was planning on doing a lot of in-person meetings, uh, because we're virtual now, it does make us more efficient, actually, and, and having the meetings with the students and so on. So, uh, yeah, so I think we're, we're right on task. We're right on time. I don't see any issues with completing the project. Um, the, the students, we've timed the end of the project with the end of their semester. Um, and November 20th is the date that we, we want the students to be done with their, with their portion. Um, and the idea is that they're, it's basically going to have, we're hoping to have final reports for each re region that'll be like mini reports for the project that we can then roll up for the whole state. Um, and then after that is when we're going to probably continue to work through the, those reports, rolling them up, but then also preparing for the economic study piece uh, with the Indiana University Public Policy Institute, uh, which I've already been, I've reached out to them, I've already talking to them uh, about getting ready for that, that portion. So, but that's gonna be, you know, the first of the year, that's gonna be the second half of the, of the actual uh, project. Okay. And will you be available as well to give us a update at the November 5th board meeting? Oh yes, I plan on attending every board meeting uh, throughout the project. So, and I think by November, I can give probably more uh, statistical information in November, obviously, uh, you know, than I can right now because we're just starting the, the collection of the data. So yes, I will be there. Very good, thank you. Yeah. Hey, I, I just wanted to ask you a question then, following up on what you said. Since everything is virtual is what I'm understanding. So it really doesn't affect your timeline much. Is that, is that about right? That's, that's correct. Uh, um, as far as meeting with the students and uh, the project, you know, all the surveys are being emailed out. So um, yeah, that's not, that's not a big uh, impairment for the project. That's great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, it's good. It's a good thing. Any other questions? Very good. The next order of business um, we have on the agenda is the selection of a vice chair. And you know, I'm pleased I've had discussions with a lady who's sitting in front of the ocean that's not moving, um, Kelly Weger. Um, 
we find as we go through the grants as board members and myself personally as the chair, as we promote these uh, grants, um, in this grant round, we had 11 applicants, very good applicants for a total of 2,050,000 and change. Um, I'm going to have to recuse myself from four of those um, grants from discussion and voting on four of those grants. So during that period of time, and I will have to um, transfer the meeting over to a vice chair. And I guess my request is, would Ms. Weger be willing to be nominated for that position? Well, because you asked so nicely, yes. Thank you very much. And with that response, Em is going to take a vote of the board. Well, um, Bruce, can I ask one question first? Absolutely. Um, there is, I think on the, on the, on the, what was it, the plus five one, they are, they are working with Purdue. So I don't know, that's an issue for me. What about for Kelly? I actually did not um, catch that. So yes, that would be a conflict. Okay, just, so I just wanted to make sure that you knew that Bruce. I think we'll get into that with uh, <laughs> Mr. French here prior to the voting. Um, but the, I think we still will have the votes required to, to go through the, the applications themselves. Um, so we'll bounce it back and forth between Kelly and myself. But I guess I'll make the nomination, or I'll make the motion uh, that Ms. Kelly Weger uh, would be selected as vice chair for the board. And with that, do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Guerin. Any additional conversation? Hearing none, we'll have a vote. Um, Mr. Gratz. Yes. Uh, Ms. Henry? Yes. Let's see. Mr. Guerin? Yes. Uh, Professor Abramowitz? Yes. And Dr. Chen? Yes. And I vote yes. Um, with that, I believe the motion carries. Kelly, I'm sorry I didn't ask you to vote for yourself. But if you'd like, you please contribute. Um, but um, thank you very much. I, I'm excited to work with Kelly. And I think she's a tremendous asset to the board. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Now, on that note, we will get into the status and updates of the existing grants. Or I'm sorry, the consideration of the uh, applications themselves. I'm excited to say that this year we had 11 excellent grant submittals. And all of the work that staff put in to review the grants was greatly appreciated. All the work by the board members to review the grants um, greatly appreciated. I personally know how much time it takes to go through the details of each grant as um, all of you can imagine, um, you do have to set a lot of time aside to go through the details. And we want to be as responsible as possible with the monies allocated by the state. So, um, unfortunately, um, with the 2050000 request, um, there are going to be um, uh, you know, several that will not be funded. Um, I highly recommend that you persevere and reapply based on budgets. Um, I guess what we find out from the state budget um, for next year, um, those the grants that may or may not be funded, they are all good quality grant applications. And I wish we had the ability to fund every one of them. Um, but we will do our best 
in reviewing the grants, um, the staff actually does an initial scoring of each grant applicant. Um, they review the application, they score based on a matrix that has developed over several years in working with this board. Following that, each board member provides their own scoring to staff and staff then averages the, the item staff um, scoring with the scoring of the board members and we then rank the applications. And normally during the award process, and I feel that's probably the route we should take this year, unless any board member objects, um, we do the countdown from the total that we have available. Um, and as we award, we work down until we run out of money. So does anyone object to following that same criteria this year? Bruce, I, I just have one comment. I was looking at um, the list and I, I did have um, in an effort to, to want to award, I mean, because as you mentioned, there are so many great projects. And so I was looking at it and uh, if one of the larger ones was able to take just a little bit less than what their total amount is, I think that we could actually, uh, if I do my math right, award um, eight. And so that's, that's one of the questions that I have when we get to that particular applicant. Okay, thank you. The one thing that we always have to be cautious of, obviously, um, we're all familiar with uh, Mr. French, our legal counsel for the board. And you know, we do have to announce and put on the record those that we have to recuse ourselves from. And I will initiate the process. Obviously, everyone has to submit to the Ethics Commission a disclosure document, a disclosure statement, conflict of interest, for decisions and voting, or discussion and voting. I personally will not be discussing four of the applications today. Um, one being Tri-State Resource Recovery Center, um, the second being uh, Dan Christiani Excavating Company Incorporated, the third being Dearborn County, and the fourth being Richmond Sanitary District. And I've submitted my disclosure statements to Mr. French. Any other um, recusals? Yes, uh, versus Sister Terry. I need to recuse myself from the Dearborn County um, application and I have discussed this with uh, Mr. French. Thank you. What I said before was on the plus five, I think I have to uh, recuse myself because they said they were working with Purdue, but I didn't have a chance to talk to Mr. French about it. I just realized that the other day. If the university was mentioned in the grant application as a contributing partner, then I think uh, it would be wise to discuss it with Mr. French and get his legal opinion on that. Is Mr. French on the call? Well, let's be safe rather than sorry um, for you, Harvey, and Kelly. Um, and I think we'll go with the recusals and um, vote accordingly. Okay, thank you. And, and just to be clear, so that's plus five is the only one that I'm aware of that there could be a conflict. So I would recuse myself from that one. All right. Thank you, Kelly. Any others? Very good. Uh, board members, um, Deanna put an excellent uh, re recap together for us and emailed it out last evening. And I don't know if all of you are in possession of that document at this time. 
Ah, the magic of electronics. Thank you very much, Diana. <clears throat> so the top scoring application that we had on the um, guest display was Tri-State Resource Recovery Center. Obviously, I'm recusing myself from any further discussions and voting on this application. So I will turn the meeting over to Ms. Weger. Okay, thank you. And um, I don't know if, if somebody is on the line from Tri-State, if they would like to introduce themselves and be available in case there are any questions from the board. Uh, good morning. morning. My name is uh, Brian Weitzel. I'm the general manager of Tri-State Resource Recovery in Evansville, Indiana. We've been in existence in Evansville since 1997. I would just like to say thank you for the opportunity today and thank you all for your service and efforts in the past few months in review of all these processes. Uh, Tri-State Resource Recovery is a self-sustaining 501c3 material recovery facility uh, serving residential and commercial customers in the city of Evansville, Vanderburg County, surrounding counties, some Kentucky and Illinois residents and businesses. And we are very proud of our participation rate of residential customers that range from 63 to 67% of residential customers ranking us as one of the highest um, participation rates in the country. Um, we are very proud of our partnership opportunity with Barry Global as our 50% uh, uh, funding grant uh, partner in this. Barry Global is a world leader in the plastic industry, as you probably are all aware, and a leader in plastic sustainability. Uh, this particular uh, grant application is specific to robotics for assisting in our plastic sorting with an emphasis on polypropylene or more commonly known as a number five plastic. Um, it will also benefit us in additional sorting of number one and number two plastics in, in complementing our manual sort that is currently happening with those products. The very neat thing about this opportunity is, is how this will assist us in closing the loop with recycling. Berry Plastics being the manufacturer of number five plastics, uh, Tri-State Resource uh, being the, the collection and sorting agent for that, and then being able to uh, provide that materials back to the manufacturer, Berry Global, in, in closing the loop uh, for that particular uh, commodity. Uh, from a financial impact, it is very positive for us. And in uh, cost avoidance through, through landfill costs, where some of this is currently uh, going to additional revenue of these commodities that we're gonna be able to take through the robotics portion of this is, is gonna allow us to continue to aid and support the recycling efforts to, to our area and uh, uh, further provide future products as well. So um, thank you for that. I'm, I'm happy to answer any additional questions. And again, thank you all for, for, for your consideration. All right, thank you, Brian. Do any board members have questions regarding this application? Uh, Terry has raised his hand. Terry Guerin. Yes. Uh, I want to congratulate you on your application. It's very well done. I just have uh, uh, one question. Do you have flow control to guarantee uh, your volumes, or are there other competitors in that area? N no, sir. No, sir. We do not have flow control. Um, there are some other regional competitors, but from a local standpoint, we're the only material recovery facility. We are contracted with the city of Evansville for the inflow of residential material, and then obviously serve hundreds of uh, commercial accounts as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Deanna, do we have any other questions? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, oh, Terry, Terry, you can go ahead and speak yeah. up if you need what, to. What uh, um, process wise, when we discuss each one of these is a motion in order. Um, if there are no additional questions or you do want to go through several of them before we make motions, how, how do you want to handle this? That's a good question. I don't know if any other board members have a particular preference. If you'd like to hear from each of the applicants first and then go back and discuss motions at that point, or if you, if anybody would like to make a motion at this point. I'd like to make a motion at this point, if I may. Okay. And, and that is because of the uh, uh, status of what they've been doing and the potential for them to be successful. I would like them to see, I would like to see them get the full amount of money that they're requesting. It's $150,000. Um, and I think if, uh, to your point earlier, uh, some of the larger applicants, uh, we need to pursue how flexible they are on their request. But this $150,000, uh, I think would be well spent. So I would move that we fund this project. Okay, we have a motion to a second. I'll second it. Okay, thank you. And now we do a roll call. So we have a motion for uh, funding $150,000 for Tri-State Resource Recovery Center. And uh, I may not have these in any particular order, but uh, Mr. Chen? Yes. And Mr. Abramowitz? Yes. Mr. Gratz? Yes. Uh, Mr. Guerin? Yes. And Ms. Henry? Yes. Did I miss anybody? Okay, the motion is approved. And is there any discussion? I guess that was. All right, uh, so then we'll move on to uh, Recycling Works. And Bruce, would you like to take that back over? Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, is there anyone available from Recycling Works Incorporated? They were the next highest scoring application uh, to discuss your project. No one in attendance from Recycling Works Incorporated. All right, Recycling Works Incorporated, uh, they were requesting $500,000 for equipment to upgrade um, their, their existing material recovery facility. Um, they expect 435 tons of waste to be diverted. Um, they expect the equipment to last for the next 10 to 15 years. In addition, they will be having an emphasis on diverting materials from landfill, such as plastics for Brightmark. Um, and then glass will be separated on the front end of the line to reduce the wear and tear on the equipment downstream. Um, any questions about the, the application from Recycling Works? Bruce, I um, uh, did have a question for them. Unfortunately, it seems as though they are not on the line. Uh, I was wondering if they would be able to complete their project if they were awarded uh, a slightly lesser amount than the 500,000 they requested. Well, I would think that if someone was requesting a half, half a million dollars, um, that they may be happy with 250, they may be happy with 100, but one would expect them to be available for questions. Deanna, did you reach out to Recycling Works? 
So yes, I did uh, uh, reach out to them and I was under the impression that they would be here. Um, but things come up, I haven't heard anything as to why they might not be here. Um, I do believe, Tom Lees, did you get a chance to visit when they did the compliance check at Recycling Works? Yes, I, I did. And it, um, yeah, very good uh, site visit meeting that uh, we attended and uh, toured the facility there in Elkhart. Um, yeah, we met with um, Chris Himes, Charlie Himes, and Logan Miller. And um, an impressive operation. And, and this uh, grant uh, will be towards uh, modifying their uh, through or line uh, to make it more efficient. Um, it, it, the idea is to get the cardboard uh, out uh, uh, towards the front of the line uh, and reduce some of the hand picking uh, downstream. Um, yeah, cardboard, it takes up a lot of space. And so the sooner you get out of the line, the better it is for them. That's what they want to do, uh, add uh, that equipment up front. Uh, very much needed for their type of operation. Um, so they're going to have optical sorters. They have a lot of conveyors that need to be uh, put in. Um, but uh, in, in addition to, to some of the plastics that, uh, well, three, three through sevens, who sometimes don't, don't have markets, but yeah, they, they, uh, Brightmark uh, is willing to take that if you can get it out of the waste stream and they'll uh, focus on getting those uh, plastics out as well and being able to bail that and send it to, uh, uh, to, to Brightmark. Um, I, I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, what they're asking, what they want to do, uh, seemed very logical. And uh, again, it was a good, good meeting. Uh, Tom, do you think, I, I think the question is, uh, maybe you have more insights since you did the site visit and talked to them. Would they be able to accept less money? Well, you know, it's a $2 million project and, you know, they need all the money they get. And, they, you know, the 500000 is what's needed. And, you know, they may take less, but, uh, you know, they're still putting a big commitment into it. You know, you know Five hundred. Yeah, if you go half, I, you know, that that hurts the their budgeting. And if I can um, address the board and just share what my particular thought is at this point in time, uh, when I look at the board scores. If we were able to uh, award Recycling Works $478,599.06, we would be able to fund uh, the top eight projects and hit that $1 million cap. So that's, that's my thought at this point. Um, and so I think that would be a, a fairly small um, reduction to go down from $500,000 to 478.6. Yeah, I would not think they'd have a problem with that. Terry, did you have something? Yeah, I, um, it bothers me that they're not here to defend that, their request. But my, my uh, concern was part of their project leans heavily on, uh, on Brightmark. T uh, Tom, have you, have you seen that facility? Because paralysis the technology works, but anytime you're involved with something that requires a continuous feed, it, it's difficult. So, have, do you? Oh, the, the, yeah, I mean, yeah, so those plastics um, are, are recovered and set, and not going to landfill, they have to go to Bright Mark yet, but there's, they're not in operation yet, and they expect to be, and that still needs to be proven out. Um, so, yeah, there's a the learning curve on their part. Uh, they, they really spent a lot of money in making that facility. Um, so there's, there's a lot of expectations in being able to take uh, uh, plastics and, and do it through a paralysis step, uh, make uh, waxes and oils, uh, uh, diesels um, uh, from that. Um, have, so, you, have, you, have you seen how they're going to handle this as a continuous flow? Oh, for at, at Brightmark? Yes, because if Brightmark is not going to be able to fulfill their part of this, then that has an impact. Uh, 
you know, significantly on uh, Recycle Works. Well, yeah, the Recycle Works, I mean, getting the, the fiber out up front is, 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 is a big part of the project. And so they got optical sorters for the fiber. Uh, but in addition, they're going to be able to, to pick the, some of the, the other plastics out. And, but uh, just the flow of the equipment and making it more streamlined and getting the fiber out up front as well as the glass is, is really needed. And so getting the plastic out is, is a little extra on their part. And, it, and so they just want to do it because they, they don't have landfills for one. And uh, it's um, the plastic side is not the big money maker for them in this project, but the, the efficiency of, of the fiber is. Um, okay. But it's good to see those plastics going and, and being a habit of use. And so they are belling them. And the stuff that you would put into uh, uh, a recycling curbside, the, the type of plastics are not the, some of the big bulky type things that you see, which obviously you wouldn't put in a curbside cart, but that people do. And those kind of plastics um, are going to be separated. Yeah, they're taking them out of the waste stream, and that, that's good. I'm just saying I don't think we ought to be uh, too dependable upon uh, by, Terry, uh, Terry, um, uh I just noticed, um, I believe we have Logan Miller just joined the um, Zoom meeting. Logan Miller, are you there? I am here. And you're representing Recycling Works? Yes, I am. Okay. Hello, Mr. Miller. Um, obviously, um, my name is Bruce Burrow. And I was, um, I guess, speaking on behalf of the board. Um, we have possibly a number of questions for you regarding your application. And I'll, we'll let it, Ms. Weger start off the questioning. Sure, thank you, Bruce. Uh, Logan, one of the questions that came up is you guys had applied for $500,000 for your program. And the question that I had is if that amount was reduced, um, would your project still be able to move forward? I know that other board members may have different ideas on what that reduction might look like. The question for me is if that was reduced to Four hundred and seventy-eight thousand and six hundred dollars. Would that per, per, uh, stop you from moving forward, or would you still be able to proceed with that? Um, I am. I mean, I'm hesitant to answer that in certain ways, but we're we're looking to do improvements regardless. Um, we have to. We're at the point now with the the, the materials evolved to the point where um, we've got to get we've got to get the the valuable material out of the waste stream. And in terms of value, I, I'm talking about diversion, um, particularly bright mark material. And um, we are, we're looking at 2021 plans um, regardless. And this would just allow us to, um, I think, commit more resources to it um, with the state backing it. And um, in, in terms of company buy-in, um, Regardless, we're, you know, we're, we're buying equipment and making it happen, but the, the support from the state is very much appreciated and needed. Um, as you all know, the markets are very difficult um, and we are a, a big stakeholder in the northern half of the state. Um, kind of across, we're, we're a big, big part of everyone around us, about a hundred mile radius and we're relied on heavily and um, to answer your, your question, yes, it, it would allow us to continue moving forward. But, um, you know, the reason we maxed out the request is because we're, you know, we're looking to do major upgrades, um, major retrofits, upwards of two and a half, three million. Okay, thank you. Um, if I may, how much of that request is for replacement equipment and how much of that request would be for, or how much of the project uh, incorporates new equipment? The new equipment is particularly, I mean, the, we're replacing a lot of equipment. The 500,000 would be used for the new equipment that is to get the 
less desirable material out of the waste stream and diverted, which is the bright mark material. The three through sevens that, um, you know, when they had a strong market, they were picked by hand. It's a weak market. And in order to divert, you have to install equipment, um, opticals, robots, um, bag sucking equipment um, for the main line. Um, so the 500,000 is easily, I mean, we'd be matching that. So a million dollars is easily done on just the diversion side. Um, I, I did a, a recent audit and like 10% of our, 10 to 15% of our waste stream be diverted um, just from the, the three through sevens in the film and um, picking it out by hand is not economical um, as you all know. Um, but the, all, all of that money would be for new equipment. Thank you. My next question is, um, I, I believe I heard from Mr. Guerin, um, Bright Mark is, is it operational currently? Yes. Still in the planning process? They are in the, pro I mean, we've been ramping them up. Um, I've been sending them three to five loads of material a month of rigid plastics, films, um, different commodities and we're, we're part of the ramp up process and um, here in the next month the, the the actual facility is handed over to the operator and it's a it's a full bore operation um, an attempt to get as much material as possible and we we're sending a material that's where our our materials going already as I'm as we were rewarded the the last grant, which is for a cart tagging program, which will resume in 2021 due to the extension um, due to COVID. But um, our, our part of that was guaranteed to haul bright mark material to Ashley. Um, and we've, we've already started that and we're far going to surpass the 50,000 match. And I assume that you're not the sole supplier for bright mark. Absolutely not. They, uh, no, not even close. Okay. Any other questions from the board members? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Yes, I have, well, what, what's the, um, what's the potential volumes that, um, Brightmark can, can, uh, process? Um, I might be speaking out of turn, but um, we are also working on um, <laughs> their waste. So I've been, it's, it's like 8,000 a month, 8,000 tons. And they're, the, the more material they acquire, the more, um, I mean, if you're familiar with Brightmark, it's basically a refinery, right? And they're, they're needing basically more material to justify just building more tanks to pelletize and um they have all the room they purchased all the land to grow and so they're at the point where they're they're now waiting for the material um which is you know they're networking heavily in michigan chicago but then they're going to open up districts all over the united states and use ashley as the hub that basically is the refinery of those pellets. Um, so 8,000 is a start. And um, so. Well, I, one of the other applicants that we would discuss later on deals with the uh, paralysis of tires. And one of the problems in paralysis is you know, trying to figure out how you can have some kind of continuous flow. Uh, to it. So not knowing exactly how Brightmark works, I would just ask if you don't have access to Brightmark, you still would be able to complete your missions, would you not? Yes, but we're signing a 10-year contract. So um, just as we have to give them the material, they have to continue operating and be available. So um, that contract's holding it pretty steady. 
that a put or pay contract? I'd say that again. Is that a put or pay contract? Do you have to supply so much material to them? Yes, we are. <laughs> we are risking. Um, correct. And and that's part of the contract that we're not too fond of, but um, we understand why they need it. But if we were to lose, you know, staple contracts, say we, you know, this is undesirable material to begin with, you know, say the state of Indiana reduced their bag usage and film usage significantly. And all of a sudden we don't have 150 tons to ship to them a month. Um, there's, they say that we're responsible to help fund the finding of that material. So it's still in the, we're still in the stages of trying to write that differently um, because, you know, it's undesirable material to begin with. And then I, say, hope, I hope you do because I, um, I'm more concerned about them not being able to perform than you <laughs> providing the material. So if, if you don't provide the material, you're penalized. What if they can't handle the material? Are they penalized? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I'm speaking out of term at this point. So I, I don't have the contract in front of me and I'm, I don't know if I should necessarily share all the, I mean, I don't have it in front of me. And if I, if I knew the answer, I'd tell you. Well, that's, that's my only concern. I, if you, you have a good project. I'd like to see you funded uh, as much as possible, but that's my concern. I, I have real questions about that aspect. Mm -hmm. The, uh, we'd still be pulling out film and you're correct. We still would be able to make the end goal of diverting that, that film, those three through sevens and, um, we're looking to make the changes where we can do it in an economical manner. Um, right now, you know, getting four people to pick film off a line doesn't, doesn't make sense in today's economic realm. So, um, they, I know, I mean, they're back financially significantly. They're, you know, they're just putting a $300 million facility, but, um, you know, that doesn't mean that they can perform your correct. And please um, don't take offense by our questions. Um, when we award monies and then those awards somehow fall apart through the contracting process, and then we have others who do not obtain grant funding that um, lose out as well. So, you know, we're just trying to get a comfort level uh, and I believe I just heard you say that you are going to make improvements to your plant regardless of Brightmark. They're not instrumental in you making those changes, correct? Correct, correct. That is, that is very true. And um, one, the contract I would say holds the, the significance of this is going to happen. And two, we're already shipping material there. Um, I was part of the building process. I went and saw it. I've been working on the trash contract as well. Um, it's very real and um, we're watching them process it and I've seen the pellets. So um, they're, they're looking to be full bore within a month. Thank you. Any other questions from board members? With no other questions, um, does anyone care to make a motion with regard to the application um, from Recycling Works Incorporated? Bruce, I would like to make a motion to fund Recycling Works at $478,599.06. I would second. We have a motion by Ms. Weger and a second by Mr. Guerin. Do we have any additional uh, conversations, comments, questions? I just said, Kelly, what, which ones are you leaving off then? Which, which eight are you talking about? Leaving off the two that have the biggest numbers? Is that how you're getting to your, your total? Yeah, looking at, so there are three different score uh, sheets that we got in our summary. And the one that's the board specific, uh, the board scores, uh, those top eight are the ones that 
I'm looking at. So it would not, it would be reduced funding for recycling works and it would not include plus five or Dan Christiani. Right, that's okay. That's what I thought you meant. We have a motion by Ms. Lager. We have a second by Mr. Guerin. Any additional conversation or comments? Yeah, could. Mr. Guerin? Yeah, I, yes, would you, the two that you're leaving off is plus five and urgent CNC, is that correct? Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, it'd be actually not including plus five, Dan Christiani, and urgent. Well, I would concur on, on dropping plus five, but I would drop urgent CNC and, and I still would like to discuss uh, Christiani. I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Anyway, I, we can cross that bridge when we get to it, but I'm in concurrence with you on, on, uh, on this motion. All right. Thank you, Terry. Any other comments? So we have a motion on the table and a second. Um, I guess we'll proceed with a roll call vote. Um, I'll start with Mr. Guerin. Yes. Mr. Abramowitz. Yes. Um, Ms. Wigger. Yes. Um, Mr. Gratz? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes. Dr. Chen? Yes. And I vote yes. I don't believe I missed anyone, did I? Yes. That's me. Sorry. <laughs> I appreciate all your support. I really do. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, with that, the motion carries unanimously. Um, I wish you the best of luck and I expect that you will perform admirably. So thank you. Thank you. Kelly, make sure that I have the number correct. I was going to say, I'm going to let you do the math. <laughs> uh, there's also six cents on there. Yep. Okay. That looks correct. Thank you. Through the first two applications, we've awarded six hundred twenty-eight thousand five ninety-nine oh six, so that leaves us a balance of three hundred seventy-one thousand four hundred and ninety-four hundred dollars and ninety-four cents. The next highest score, I will be recusing myself from discussion and voting on Richmond Sanitary District. Ms. Wigger, will you take over? I will. Uh, is there someone here from Richmond Sanitary District who would like to introduce themselves and um, briefly summarize your project? Yes. My name is Leanne Hahn, and I'm representing the Richmond Sanitary District today. Um, the name of our project is Stepping Up, Initiating Curbside cardboard recycling in Richmond, Indiana. We currently have a curbside recycling program. It was initiated in 1968. We are wanting to add a cardboard recycling uh, capable truck, as well as additional containers for cardboard. We currently have assessed our, our recycling, well, our stream of trash that goes to the landfill and 20% of our residential trash right now is cardboard. So we are thinking uh, we would like to divert that uh, stream out of our uh, landfill uh, stream of trash. Uh, we already have uh, contracts with recycling uh, groups and then we would be able to uh, up, up the cardboard that we currently are selling to those uh, in, to those uh, corporations. 
What we're looking at is uh, we currently right now have uh, special requests where we can go out and pick up trash. So five to 10 times a week, we get special requests to pick up, uh, excuse me, cardboard from, you know, residents. We also have a drop-off cardboard container out at the landfill. So that's where our current uh, activity occurs. Um, we, we recycle approximately 168 tons of cardboard right now. We believe, and I think this is a conservative estimate, that we can double that amount uh, within the first year. Um, we uh, also know that uh, when we, I, I participate in the Richmond Environmental Sustainability Commission and cardboard is our number one request from any of our survey work that we do with our community. It is our hot button topic uh, that we always uh, receive requests for. So we believe that the community will support um, this addition to our current curbside recycling you know, program. Um, our request is for uh, the total cost of the project is $440,000 that money has already been um, uh, allocated for the 200, 2021 budget. We're requesting $220,000. Questions? Thank you, Ms. Han. Uh, any questions from the board? Mm, Kelly, I have one. I have one. It, you know, it's sure. great because the, you know, the cardboard is, is obviously uh, <clears throat> can provide more income than a lot of the other recyclables. It how, how, is actually the number one right, uh, right, opportunity. Right. So how much more do you think you, I'm just curious, how much more do you think you can bring in an income to the district by doing this? I'm sorry, I don't have that report in front of me at this moment. Um, I didn't, I did not define it in dollars and cents for the purpose of writing this grant. But we, we currently have a contract where we are getting paid for the cardboard that people deliver to the landfill, and we right. currently al already have a bailing, pe you know, a piece of equipment that bails it, and they come and pick it up. I'm just saying that helps the community out because that's money coming in to support the, the community. Yes, and and I have that report. I just don't have it pulled up on my screen right now. Okay. Any other? Thank questions? you for trying to help. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Ms. Han. Um, if, if there are no other questions from the board. Mr. Carroll, uh, I see your hand raised. Is that still from last time? Oh. No, anyway. me. Go ahead, Terry. Well, we go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I have several questions. First, we've, we have a, uh, a history of having being very hesitant about uh, funding vehicles, number one. So that's an issue I think we need to uh, address. Uh, you mentioned in your application that it, you offer free recycling and that always bothers me because somebody pays for it. And I'm assuming based again on your application, you, you do not know exactly uh, what your budget's going to be for next year because it hasn't been voted on yet. And that's the second question. Uh, the third question is um, containers, the cost of containers is usually uh, included into the bid uh, by your provider. And so 2000, maybe that's enough right now. Uh, I'm concerned about uh, our funding those. And I wonder if you're off, what's gonna happen if, if the program grows? I don't know how many households uh, growth there is in the Richmond area, but Richmond's a rather thriving area. So I'm concerned about how you're gonna handle future costs since you're gonna have to go back and, and get that approved through a budget. So those are multiple questions. I just have several concerns. Sure. Um, I'll take the budget question first. Um, since this uh, project was submitted, we, we are, um, our budget has been 
uh, gone through the committee as a whole and it's gone through first reading. Um, it has been approved by our sanitary board of commissioners. Um, it has moved on to our council and we've gone through the finance committee, our second reading uh, for the city of Richmond budget will be completed on October the 5th. So, and that'll be our final reading. So there, the, the monies for our match are already approved internally within our department, as well as through our board of commissioners and has uh, also gone through the finance committee, the committee of the whole, and through the council uh, ordinance reading has been a, approved the first reading. Obviously that requires a second reading. Does, does that answer your budget question? It answers the budget question. Uh, now on the containers. Okay. Um, sure. On the, on the container side, I submitted with our application uh, the current uh, accepted bid for containers. Uh, it's a three-year bid. Uh, count, you know, it's, that bid is, is uh, firm for three years. Uh, I, were you, did you happen to, I, I don't know if you happen to see that attachment or not. And that's, uh, and we have $140,000 in our budget each year for the next, for the five year period uh, for container purchase. Uh, some of that obviously will go to replacement of containers uh, that are currently, or recycling containers that are currently, you know, out in the community. But we do have, uh, we do have that dollar amount allocated in our five-year uh, pro, forma, pro forma budget. Who owns the current uh, recycling containers this year? Uh, we, we own all of our own containers. Okay. We, we put our recycling out for bid. Again, that's a three-year uh, bid that, you know, so we work with that uh, group for three years based upon the pricing. They, we have the ability to go out and rebid it every year if we want, if we're satisfied, we, basically uh, just push that uh, that contract out for a, a second and a third year. And the truck. Yes. Well. The, I, okay, so does anybody else want to speak to the truck? Um, before we submitted this bid, we did make an inquiry uh, regarding the uh, appropriateness of asking for the recycling truck. So um, and we received a, an affirmative answer uh, to that to that inquiry prior to writing this grant. Yes, our policy uh, guidelines say that we um, hesitate to do um, if it's a generic truck or something like that that can be used for multiple purposes. We don't like to fund those. However, um, it's a specialized truck that can be only used for the purpose that they are uh, set forth in their. Uh, project applications, so we accept um, applications like that. What is the 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 two thousand containers? Is that going to be sufficient? Looking at, I guess, immediate uh, chances for growth. Is that is that going to be enough? We we felt that that was appropriate for for getting started. Um, again, we have the ability to possibly. Uh, provide additional containers or add containers to that. But um, to initiate this activity, we thought that 2000 containers would be a, uh, where we wanted to begin. We, we, we have several routes. If I included our website as part of our application, we have multiple routes um, within the community that we run. And so we were gonna initiate uh, different parts of the community. We we're gonna start uh, with one route, get it up and running, then the following uh, month, get the next route, get the next route, um, so that we could, we, the rollout for this is, is going to be gradual. I mean, we don't want to start the entire town at the same time. Well, I guess the final question would, well, I guess two questions is, um, we we'll always look at uh, sustainability on, on these grant applications. And so I'm assuming you have enough political support 
uh, for funding in future years. You can't really answer that because, you know, the people in office now may not be in office in the next sure. uh, two or three years. But it sounds like, and I'm familiar with, uh, you know, the Richmond area, and I, I think the the political support, I, I'm, I'm guessing, is there. The only other thing I would say is somebody is paying for your recycling program, so um, I don't like that word free recycling. Okay. Uh, I'll <laughs> see what I can do about that. It's a personal bias. <laughs> it's a personal I, I, bias. <laughs> I will just sort of raise uh, your awareness that our current curbside recycling program has an 84% participation rate. I saw that. And that we are getting five to 10 requests from, you know, just uh, randomly from the community for cardboard. We believe it's the Amazon effect. Um, and I will say that when we did, uh, we have an approved ordinance specifically for this grant from the city council at this time. And we did receive favorable comments from three different council members, including the, the current chairman of the board. You've answered all my questions. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. I appreciate your interest. Deanna, was there another question? I'm sorry, Mr. Gratz has his hand raised. Uh, actually, I, she answered my question, uh, so I'm, I'm good. Okay. okay, thank you, Ms. Hahn. And, and I will just share my personal opinion varies from Terry's in that uh, living in an area where I do where, where my trash pickup is free, I actually like and recycling is, is also included instead of being an add-on fee. Uh, I wish it was reversed, honestly, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, are there any other questions from the board? And if not, would anybody like to make a motion? I just, Kelly, uh, Kelly, I just want to make a comment because I think it's, I just want to thank Terry for answering, answer, asking the question about the truck and Deanna for answering because that was the biggest, because the majority, I think, of this grant is going to go to the truck. So that's why it's an important question to, to have answered. And I appreciate your answer because Terry is right. Usually we don't. I mean, you, you answered the question. Just want to make sure that point is clear. Yeah, thank you. I, I do appreciate, Deanna, your, your comment about the, it's the distinction between having a truck that is specialized for recycling and couldn't be purchased and then flipped over to trash or something like that. Any other comments or questions? Okay, would anybody like to make a motion? I'll make a motion to fund it. Okay. And do I hear a second? I second. Okay. Uh, so we'll do a roll call. Uh, so we're looking at funding Richmond Sanitary District for the full amount requested of $220,000. And uh, we'll start with um, Mr. Bromwitz. Yes. Mr. Chen. Yes. Mr. Gratz? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Say Guerin? Yeah. Yes, yes. And Ms. Henry? Yes. And with that, motion is approved. I believe, according to my math, uh, after that, we will have $151,400.94 remaining. I just want to thank you all very much for your consideration. Congratulations. And Bruce, I believe the next one uh, you also need to recuse yourself, recuse yourself of, uh, as well as Mr. Guerin, so we can move forward with uh, Dearborn County's application. And do we have somebody from Dearborn County who would like to introduce yourself and briefly describe your project? 
Yes, um, I'm Sandy Whitehead. I'm the director at the Dearborn County Solid Waste Management District, and um, I'm not a voting member yet of the Recycling Market Development Board, um, so I, of course, I won't be voting on this anyway, um, but our project is um, very simple. We are looking to purchase five 21 cubic yard recycling drop boxes to place at five of our busiest sites in Dearborn County. We um, currently have 14 sites across the county. And again, we'd like to place these containers at five of those sites. Um, you know, just like I, some of these other projects, we are seeing a lot more cardboard in the flow of material and um, our current uh, recycling collection trailers only hold four cubic yards. So these containers would help us greatly. Um, we would project that we'd have a 25% growth in our collection. And of course, that's just a projection. Hopefully it would even be more than that, um, which would result in an additional 48 tons of corrugated cardboard for us um, per year. So the amount of our grant that we're requesting is $15,212.50. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Whitehead. And does anybody have questions or comments for Ms. Whitehead? Okay, uh, thank you for your time. Uh, is there any anything else anybody from the board would like to discuss? Would anybody like Only to? Make just, it just seems like it's the Amazon effect again. <laughs> <laughs> Cardboard seems to be the theme this year. That's for mm -hmm. sure. All right. Would anybody like to make a motion? This is Tara. I move that we fund the Dearborn County project for $15,212.50. Okay. And do I hear a second? This is Matt. Uh, I'd make a second. Okay. And uh, are there any comments before we do roll call? All right. So for uh, Dearborn County funding at the requested amount of $15,212.50. Uh, Mr. Chen? Yes. Mr. Bromowitz? Yes. Mr. Gratz? Yes. And Ms. Henry? Yes. All right. So that motion is approved. Thank you so much for your <laughs> approval, uh, for your consideration and your approval. Kelly, are you putting your own vote on record? Oh, is that how I do it? <laughs> I think I, yes, Bruce. <laughs> I mean, I think, I think you have a right I'm to I'm new to the vice chair thing. <laughs> and, and Harvey's bringing that up uh, too, because we do need five votes on that one um, for our quorum. You okay. have to vote, Kelly. My vote is a yes. All right, um, so with that, uh, what I show is $136,188.44 remaining. And I will turn it back over to Bruce. All right, thank you, Kelly. The next highest scoring on the combined average is Rush County. Do we have anyone available for questions from Rush County. Yes, this is Carol Yand. I'm director of Rush County Solid Waste Management District. Thank you, Ms. Yand. Um, would you like to explain your project a bit? Um, the project it is, is pretty simple. Uh, in May, things really changed with, with cost for the district. At one time, our cardboard was picked up at no cost and some rebate given back. That changed with um, a change in uh, 
ownership of, of the uh, provider of the service. So uh, our, our costs increased exponentially uh, in, in hauling that cardboard. We're a very small district. Um, it's a drop-off center. The city does recycle cardboard in, in curbside recycling, but that's not part of the district's budget or responsibility. So we uh, were looking for a compactor of the cardboard that would significantly reduce the hauling cost and we would get still some back for that cardboard. Uh, I chose not to apply for a new compactor, one based on volume, one based on not really knowing how much that we would have or how well that would work. I did find a, a nice rebuilt compactor and um, have thrown that into the request. Thank you. Um, thinking back, I, I, and I apologize to my fellow board members, I have to ask you, um, Michelle, do you do any business with Rumpke Waste and Recycling currently? No, no. Never have. Well, yeah, thank you. That, that allows me to continue to discuss your application. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to double check that. Um, what, what is the, do you, when you say you chose to find a rebuilt compactor, um, do you have to make a model? Uh, I believe that was in the grant. Um, not in front of me, apparently. I printed off the grant. I wasn't even sure what to expect today and how to be prepared. So I, I do apologize. Um, maybe I do have that here. Close by. <clears throat> Here's the contactor folder. I think I can tell you. It was really that's not really that important. I guess my question is, and I don't need to know who you are obtaining it from. Um, does that mm -hmm. come with maintenance uh, guarantees on that rebuild compactor? For a specific I believe it, it went for a year. Um, uh -huh. They offered to rent it to me as well. I have it up and on my I, screen. It's with Codwell's. Yes. Corporation. Um, Jordan Caldwell uh, has rebuilt it in, in his. Um, have a picture of it, <laughs> but they didn't seem to have the name of it on <laughs> that I can see. So um, one of the things that was included in this grant that might be a little different, normally those compactors require three-phase electrical, and that was not available, nor the cost of moving it uh, or, or bringing it to the site. So uh, I had asked for a converter and for that particular compactor, I was told that that would be another $6,000. And the reason I think that that could work is that um, we don't have a lot of volume. And that was another reason, there's the picture of the compactor. Um, that's another reason I didn't go full bore on this, that you know we were just gonna buy a, a big, bright, brand new compactor and go. This was, a minimal investment, um, yet it could prove the theory out. It fit in my budget, which is pretty small as a single district. So that was my logic for doing that. No, I see what other questions can I try to answer? I see listed on the uh, proposal from Caldwell, a rebuilt two yard stationary with a three-sided hopper, obviously, and a rebuilt mm -hmm. contained compactor. 
Um, which model are you choosing? Or are you choosing? The, it would have been, it, it could be either one. Probably we would go for the um, $9,000 one. They're, they're very similar. And Jordan, when he gave me the um, bid was, we were going to do two of them because we had two cap containers. Um, I don't think we're gonna need that with, with the um, compression. And a very interesting thing happened these containers were only holding about a half a ton and being pulled so frequently. And I literally put up an arrow sign that said, this cost $150 for every pull. You need to flatten your cardboard or don't put it in there. And they flattened it and we doubled it. So uh, it's amazing what happens when you ask people to do the right thing. So I, I think one could cover it and that's why. I only asked for the one, but this this was the documentation, the quotation I had. And another question, I hate to break you over the cold. That's fine. Um, <laughs> it's okay. Um, you say you have a price per haul. Is that price yes. per haul the same for each type of compactor? Um, no, I don't have the price the price per haul would probably be for what we would compact with that. Um, I, I was told that that compactor could replace four hauls. So, and, so and I'm guessing that that's going to save I agree with that a statement. amount of money. I, yeah. I would agree with that statement, but my concern is on the stationary model. When mm -hmm. you Pulling a stationary compactor, you have the ability to take one leg off of the, well, let me just explain. You will send a truck with a box, an empty box on its back to the facility. Mm -hmm. You will switch it out with the full box and then you will take it to your processor. With the self contained unit, you have to take a truck there with empty rails pick up the self-contained unit, take it to your processor, and then you have a third leg of bringing it back, which is probably going to increase your haul charge. So I would think that the, um, I, would, I would promote the stationary unit um, be much more applicable to your needs and desires um, than the self-contained. But that's totally up to you. That's just a piece of advice from somebody who's been hanging around for a while in the recycling industry. I'm sure Mr. Guerin would agree with me. My experience with compactors has been limited, so I appreciate that advice. And another reason why I didn't go big and better till we knew what we were doing and how that worked. It looks like Mr. Guerin has his hand raised. Uh, I'm familiar with this in this district, and Carol, you you have done wonders on a shoestring budget for years, so I admire you for that. I quite frankly this was surprised, surprised that you didn't ask for more money, and I would encourage you uh, that if this works well for you, uh, that you come back to us. Um, you know, at some point, okay, okay. try to upgrade. But anyway, I I am fully supportive of of uh, what you have done with that district, and I'm very supportive of your application. By the way, it, Jordan, okay. is he on his own now, or is he still with CGS? Yes. No, he's totally away from that. CGS is sold out to Advanced, and I guess Advanced is then to Waste Management, although that hasn't been totally cleared up yet because of I, 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 knew that, I, I knew the waste management owned it now. I just wondered whether he was still with the company or not. Jordan is not. No, he, he's taken the, this equipment side and, and apparently worked with it somewhat. Okay. And thank you. rebuilding. Yeah. So thank you. And thank you for the compliment. Yes, I do operate on a, on a shoestring and, and probably think inappropriately that way that I could ask for more. So. Um, 
unfortunately, I have to match that. And my county council thinks that my shoestring should be much shorter. <laughs> but thank you, Terry, for those comments. That uh, gives me, you know, a better feeling. And um, Carol, thank you very much. I know you're doing a wonderful job with Mr. Guerin's support. So. And <laughs> It's the first time I've talked to Mr. Aaron in, what, three years, Terry. Good to see you. Good to see you. Any other questions or comments from board members? Could I make a motion, Mr. Chairman? You may. I uh, move that we uh, fully support and fund the application from Rush County District. Okay, we have a motion to fund Rush County in the amount of $10,050. And do I have a second? I'll second. This is Kelly. Thank you, Ms. Wigger. We have a second from Ms. Wigger. Um, any additional discussion required? Yes. With none, we'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Wigger? Yes. Professor Abramowitz? Yes. Um, Dr. Chen? Yes. Um, Mr. Gretz? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes. Any that I've missed? I vote yes. With that, Carol, congratulations. You have your grant approved unanimously. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. You're quite welcome. Good luck to you. Now we have what left? $126,138.44. The scoring wise, the next company is Technology Recyclers. We have a representative available from Technology Recyclers. Yeah, good morning. My name is Dale Needleman. I'm one of the partners um, and founding member of Technology Recyclers. Thank you very much. Could you please give us a brief overview to refresh our memories as we've reviewed many grants? Please. Sure, can, sure can. Thank you for uh, the opportunity to even uh, have a uh, ability to go for some of this money. So Technology Recyclers is now nine years old. We are an R2 recycler. Indiana veteran owned and we're 100% landfill free. Our primary goal in the early days was to create a safe ethical recycling stream for businesses. And we did that. We spent what little money we had for marketing after we were building our factory and whatnot. We're located on the east side of Indianapolis. Um, we went after businesses and created a solution for them for their e-waste. And in doing that, we became R2 Rios certified. Um, and, you know, we uh, protect data as well as protecting the earth. Along the way, we took on uh, the mission of saving the earth and the people in it. Our tagline is the official sponsors of tomorrow. And we started holding the community events, um, many of them around Indianapolis and, and elsewhere throughout the state. Uh, so we'll hold the events in Fishers and Carmel and Greenwood and, um, uh, you know, a number of different cities who want to hold events and give uh, patrons and uh, homeowners the ability to drop off items on Saturdays. We service the whole state of Indiana. In the past couple years, it's become clear that the solid waste districts cannot often handle the flow of incoming materials from both their residents and their businesses. So every time we gain a business customer, we're in essence giving them a solution for ethical recycling and taking some load off of uh, solid waste districts. I've had calls even just this week with that exact discussion. We have about 4,000 active customers. Uh, we have 32 employees. We run four box trucks. Uh, and some semis in and out of the Plainfield area. Um, and soon, um, I believe, we'll be voted in to take on yet another solid waste district. The purpose of our grant is to actually spend some specific 
money marketing to the people of the state of Indiana, both businesses uh, and residents, about the importance of uh, safe and ethical electronics recycling. In doing so, yes, our tonnage is going to go up. We have room for it. We run our own shredding systems in our building. We have the employees for it. We have the space for it, et cetera. But we're also going to be reducing the load um, of any potential electronic waste going uh, certainly back to the earth or being wrongly dropped off. Um, the last comment I'll make is we've seen um, communities that offer recycling um, report to us that they're not cleaning up illegally dumped materials in the back of parking lots and the streets or even in ponds or streams. Um, Fishers, for example, was the first one. We've been doing events for Fishers for nine years now. Um, and they're happy to hold that event because their cleanup around the city has gone down significantly. So that's what we're trying to achieve. I'm certainly open to answer any questions anybody would have. Are you utilizing the standard um, marketing materials um, that are most, I guess, are mo more senior and seasoned um, board members are familiar with? or well, utilizing digital marketing? I'm a senior guy myself, and so um, I think we utilize a full array of it. I've uh, been connected with a, a much younger gentleman than me who's helped us to become digital, electronic, and fully uh, available on social media. But we're also doing some advertising in uh, the IBJ. We've done some radio. Um, I'm not a big fan of billboards, but some of you might have noticed our buses running around the city. We're the guys with the multicolor trucks and we always have a bus as marketing um, for the first six years of our business. So the people of downtown Indy, the businesses learned who we were. So we, we do a bunch of both, if you would. Um, this campaign, a lot of what was written into it was educational materials, where instead of now, I guess I'd like to say we're enjoying a little bit of luxury that we're not scrambling to keep our business growing and alive. We've been successful. We're very lucky like that. We provide a good service. I think we have over 250 five-star reviews on Google saying that our service is impeccable, on time, clean cut, and we do what we say. Um, but I wanna go and market more so that people understand the importance of it, the actual education side of electronics marketing and then give them a solution. Thank you. I congratulate you on your five-star Google re reviews. Um, Thank you. Your digital marketing man will be very pleased with that and his ability to work with that moving forward. He, he is, and I, I thank you for saying that. Our customer service is the difference. Um, I've spent most of my life running large companies from an operational standpoint. So I believe we understood what it took to walk into a person's business and provide them five-star service. And that's frankly why we've been successful. Very good. One, so other, one other thing I'd like, I'm sorry, I, I know you, we're time sensitive. The thing we did different than anyone else is our service is free. We do not charge you anywhere in the state of Indiana to go to your business, pick up your electronic waste and guarantee it destroyed. It's very interesting. Um, Terry and I are probably the same mindset. How do you manage to accomplish that? It's, uh, it's been a challenge, but we're efficient. Uh, we have learned how to handle the materials quickly and destroy them. We've built our own shredding and separating systems, and it's all about material in and material out. The only thing we charge for, of course, we don't have a choice anymore, are CRT monitors. And, and becoming to be most TVs. But that's a charge that people can pay at a reduced rate. Thank you. You're welcome. Questions from board members? May I ask a question? This is Senator Burrow, I have my hand raised. Sure. Certainly. Um, you said that you operate on the east side of Indianapolis, where, where are you located? We're on Franklin Road in what was the old Marsh Distribution Center. Oh, okay. Franklin in well, Washington. Then, well, then congratulations. You're in my district, and it's wonderful wonderful to have you in my district. I don't have a lot of 
uh, five-star businesses located there. Um, I would love to see if there's an opportunity offline to perhaps do some kind of a partnership uh, where I can get folks in my community to uh, um, drop off their, their items to you. We, we would enjoy that and I'd welcome you to come take a tour, anybody for that matter. Uh, we're pretty open about what we do. Um, and I will tell you, we receive about 20 uh, drop-offs from homeowners a day. Well, if it's okay with you, I'll, I'll reach out to uh, Deanna to get your contact information. Please do. I look forward to it. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Perot. Any other comments? Yes. Mr. Guerin. Uh, just one question. Uh, do you yes. ship any waste overseas? Unfortunately, we do. Um, there's no way around. Most of the plastic goes back to China and has. That's changed, of course, in the past two years. Um, and the smelting that we do of uh, our precious metals go through Chicago. We shred it. It goes through Chicago and it ends up in Japan to be smelted. And that's mostly because those uh, services aren't available in the United States. What about waste? Um, well, the only waste we have, so first of all, is we try to reduce what we take or restrict what we take. We try not to accept wood um, or paper, if, it, if you will, just we're not a paper recycler. Anything that we do that would be considered waste, we take uh, um, to the, ultimately we shred it, guarantee its destruction, and then we take it to the incinerator so it's waste to energy. Nothing goes into the earth. So nothing hazardous goes overseas? No, no. As an R2 certified recycler, we have restrictions on what we can do with who. So first of all, everyone, we our downstreams are all also R2 certified, um, which guarantees their safety and, and legality and eth you know, ethicalness of behavior. And we have an outside uh, third party quality consultant who watches over our program. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, do I have a motion? So move. I have a motion by Mr. Guerin to approve the technology recyclers for nine, 97,500. Don't let me put words in your mouth, Terry. Let me check to see what the amount was. 97,500, is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I have a motion by Mr. Guerin. Do I have a second? I second it, Jay Chin. A second by Dr. Jin. Thank you. Um, any additional discussions necessary? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Weger. Yes. I, I apologize, was that a yes? Yes. Professor Abramowitz. Yes. Mr. Gratz. Yes. Mr. Guerin. Yes. Ms. Henry. Yes. Mr. Chen. Yes. And I vote yes. So you, um, we have an unanimous approval of your request for $97,500. Congratulations, sir. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. We'll make you proud how and how we use it. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you back here again. We'd like to visit your facility at some point in time. And just please make a connection to do so. I'm happy to tour uh, any of you anytime. I know the IDEM people have been through and um, we don't mind showing off what we've built. Well, I, I also recommend highly that you speak with Senator Burrow. She has been a champion of our program for many, many years. I will do it. Thank you very much. I will do it. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you all. So. Let's see, how much do we have left? 28,638.
Kelly, may I ask what was your intentions when you reduced um, the Recycle Works grant, the next two grants that you're looking at? Yeah, the next two that I was looking at that I would like to, to see funded were, were Rethink and Elliott Companies of ND. And both of those were in the board's um, top eight. So this is based off of the board average scores? Correct. And for everyone on the call, please understand that those of us who recused from your application, there was no score given um, to your application by any of the recusals. So um, I think we're doing everything above board and as transparent as possible. Um, so the next then would be Rethink Incorporated. And do we have a representative from Rethink Incorporated available? Hi, yes, my name is Rebecca Bursich. I'm the president of Rethink and also a professor at Rose Holman Institute of Technology. I think also on the call, we have our uh, executive director, Shika Bhattacharya, and our operations manager, uh, Megan Mons. Um, so the purpose of the Rethink Plastic Upcycling Center is to uh, divert plastic from landfills and then also to serve as an educational uh, collaborative workspace for the community and students at Indiana State University and Rose Holman. Um, so for example, I'm personally overseeing projects right now in automated plastic recycling, as well as uh, new opportunities for PET recycling. Uh, so the Upcycling Center is already serving as a hub for um, activity for students and researchers and community members who are interested in making strides in plastic recycling. Um, so this grant would allow us to purchase equipment to scale up our collection and processing, uh, as well as purchasing equipment to open up our downstream reforming processes. Uh, so sheet pressing and extrusion and injection molding since we're already able to shred. Uh, so I would um, be happy to answer any questions from the board and uh, Chica and Megan may also uh, chime in if they're better able to answer. Do we have any questions from board members? Apologize, I'm reading some notes that are popping up. Yes. Terry? I, I just, I think you could use more money. I don't think you asked for enough. Yes, I think we have a similar, we were in a similar situation um, as described earlier by the, um, the uh, uh, cardboard compactor project, which is that we're a nonprofit um, that's a pretty lean operation. And so part of that limitation is what the funds that we can match with. Um, so we were cognizant of that and putting together our application. Understood, thank you. Mr. Chairman, could I make a motion? Absolutely. I would move that we uh, fully fund their project at 10,000, if I'm reading it correctly, $10,454. We have a motion to award Rethink Incorporated $10,454. Do I have a second? I'll second. Is that Ms. Weger? Yes. I have a second by Ms. Wigger. Any additional discussions? Hearing none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Professor Abramowitz? Yes. Mr. Gretz? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Yes. Ms. Wigger? Yes. Uh, Ms. Henry? Yes. Dr. Chen? Yes. And I also vote yes. Congratulations. Um, I'm sorry you popped off my screen, so I don't know your last name. 
Thank you very much. We really appreciate your support. Thank you very much for your presentation and good luck. And uh, sometimes those short shoe strings, they'll turn into longer ones. So good luck. So. <laughs> Um, with that, now we have the 18,184.44. It does excellent math. Um, so that just happens to be the amount requested by our next highest scoring um, application as scored by the board, which is L8 Companies of Indi. Of Indi. Do we have any representatives available from Elliott Companies of Indy? Hearing none, Tom, would you be able to give us a, just your, your thoughts and comments regarding your review of the application? You out there, Tom? Good, yeah, finding my, my mute button. Um, yes. Uh, so the company is a manufacturer of polyisocyanate uh, foam blocks. Um, I haven't toured their facility, but um, yes, they, they make a, a very good product. Um, but in doing that, um, their trimmings uh, uh, from the fabrication of, of these blocks are uh, used for insulation purposes, um, um, which goes to a landfill. Uh, and yet some of these, um, well, there's two types of waste that they're generating within their facility. It, it's the trimmings as well as some of the blocks that, that don't meet uh, specifications. So they just um, are taken to a landfill uh, 500 uh, tons per year. It's a big I believe Tom's frozen up on us. Yeah. Uh, yep. He's frozen. It may just take a moment. Sometimes uh, it hops right back in. I was um, pulling up their application so that we could view it. You know, I have to say, this is the longest I've ever gone in a virtual meeting and had the first technical glitch just happen. <laughs> Hopefully. Give all that credit to Deanna. Oh, no. I just, uh, good luck. <laughs> um, I will say my comments on Elliott Company is that it's a different uh, kind of proposal uh, that we haven't funded in a while because we're talking about a research project. Um, With expanded polystyrene or was it uh, polypropylene? What is going on? Sorry, too many things up on my screen. Yeah, and um, so some of the costs that I would like the board to discuss if they decide to award this one, um, because um, there is labor costs involved, which personnel costs we do not fund in a typical, you know, um, kind of equipment a recycling project. So um, I know that the board is eligible, or it, it does state in our statute that we can fund research projects. Um, this will be the first one while I've been with the board. Um, and so I, we just need to be very specific on what we are funding through it as well. You know, are you a research project? The majority of the funding is um, labor costs. So out of, that, out of the request, you've excluded the labor cost in the 18,184.44, correct? I have not. 
because we could, because it's a research project, we can, we can decide to fund those costs. Okay. The board can, I should say, let me clarify that. The board <laughs> may decide to fund those costs. I'm going to uh, share the proposal in that breakdown of costs. It looks like uh, Mr. Guerin has raised his hand as well. Um, Terry, what are your comments? Mr. Guerin? I say that was a that was an accident. Okay. <laughs> Spasticity with the mouse. <laughs> Kelly, do you have any comments with regard to this application? Yeah, I just want to say that I know this certainly is a little bit more of a unique project than uh, what we typically see. Um, I did have the same kind of question about labor, but because of the nature of the project, in, in my view, it makes sense in this case. So I personally think that it, it is a worthwhile investment to see what what they're able to develop as a result of this research project and uh, so I, I support it. I like taking chances and um, with this research project we're not speaking of a significant amount of money and You know, if we can happen upon something new, it obviously is well worth the investment. So I would agree with Kelly yeah, that um, this project would have my support as well. Bruce, I'd like to make a motion to, uh, to support and fund this project for the full amount requested. I have a motion by Ms. Weger for 18184 44 for Elliott Companies of Indy. Do I have a second? I'll second it. This is Matt. Second by Mr. Gratz. Thank you, Matt. Um, any additional discussion? With none, we'll have a roll call vote. Uh, Ms. Weger? Yes. Professor Abramowitz? Yes. Mr. Gratz? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes. Dr. Chain? Yes. And I vote yes. So there's unanimous approval. Motion carries. Um, rethink, or I'm sorry, Elliot. Companies of ND will be awarded 18,184.44, which depletes our funding. Uh, that is available for this year. I will, I do want to comment that um, we had several more dollars requested. I wish we would have had $2 million because I think we have a couple additional projects that are very worthwhile. And I, I you know, wholeheartedly hope that you will consider rolling that application into next year's funding round. So my thanks to all the applicants. Um, it was a it was a good year. And my thanks to all the board members and staff for their time and effort in reviewing all of the applications. Um, also appreciate all the support by staff. So thank you all very much. Um, Next.
Uh, my paper all shuffled up. Go ahead. Uh, Pat Daniel would like to take a moment to address the board. Hello, Pat. And Pat, is, you're, you are still muted. There we yeah. go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to do that. Um, I just wanted to um, get the board's permission to do um, to submit our legislative reports to the legislature. They're due to the legislature by November 1st. Um, and as you know, the Recycling Market Development Board report and the Recycling Report has to be approved by the board. Um, what we'd like to be able to do is submit that on behalf of the board in time so they can get it since the board doesn't meet again until after that due date. Um, we, when we submit it mid-October, we will submit a copy to the board members as well, but we would like to know if it's okay with the board if we go ahead and submit that um, on your behalf um, to the legislature so they have it before November 1st. I have a motion to grant permission to submit and staff to submit um, the report um, from a board member. May, may I ask a quick question? Certainly. Um, this is a budget year and you have a number of elected representatives on this board. Um, if we're, we're already very concerned about the $1 million that's being withheld. Um, but if there are other areas of concern um, that you think legislators would be helpful, um, if Pat or someone could reach out to us or me or something so that we could try to um, advocate on your behalf uh, the, during this budget cycle. Absolutely. And we certainly always appreciate your support. So any board member that um, did they just reach out to you? I believe it was Senator Burrow, correct? Yes, that is me. And, and yes, feel free to reach out to me. And I will see that the other board members, or at least our Representative Arrington um, and Representative Scheibling and Senator Buchanan, I can make sure that they are aware of whatever your concerns are. Thank you. Any other comments from board members? Yes. Do I have a motion to and give them permission to submit the report on our behalf? Harry, did you have a question? Yeah, I just um, would just reach out and, and offer input from the, the solid waste industry. You could do that through me uh, because we are the ones that are supplying the money to, that, to those funds. And while it certainly is a stage prerogative to do with whatever they want with those monies, I, I, I do think input from us might be helpful. I would agree. And I would uh, make the motion to approve the request. Okay, let me just clarify. The report that we have to submit is the annual reports that we submit every year just about the status for 20, it'd be for 2019 data um, and what the board accomplished in the last year. Um, so we have to submit an annual report on the board activities every year, as well as e-waste. And we usually submit those, give a presentation to the board once a year on both of those reports before we submit them. Um, so that's the kind of information that's in those reports. And, and Basically I, is how the money was used. And Pat, I understand that. And I understand you're looking at a report, uh, report for 2019, but we Correct. are approaching a budget year. And I don't right. know if you're the appropriate person that that question that I pose should go to, but um, whom, whomever through IDEM, through this organization that um, wants to um, give us any kind of information as to how we can advocate for budget uh, you, you know, we will certainly be fighting to, to restore the one million or get it released. I know I will be, but um, if there are other areas, if, if you're not the right person, um, whomever that okay. is, please reach out to me. Okay. And that's who I'm offering support to. Okay. Terry, can you um, rally um, any support from NSWMA? Yes. And that, and that's basically what I was referring to, the, the state chapters, what I was making reference to. Okay. Because that organization represents, of course, 
all of the solid waste industry. Thank you. Allison, are you still on the call? Allison Mitchell? We may have lost Allison. <clears throat> All right. Any other comments? Board members? Do I have a motion to allow um, Pat to submit on our behalf for 2019? So move. I have a second. This is Matt. I'll second that. Second Matt, you're going to have to come wrestle me for it. <laughs> <laughs> so we have motion and a second. Any other, other discussion? And we will do a roll call vote on this as well. Ms. Weger? Yes. Professor Abramowitz? Yes. Mr. Gretz? Yes. Mr. Guerin? Yes. Ms. Henry? Yes, thank you, Pat. Yeah. Dr. Chen? Yes. Um, I vote yes. Motion carries. Thank you, Pat, uh, for compiling that and submitting it on our behalf. Thank you. All right. Um, now we're down to the other category. The first item I will say is our next meeting date is November 5th of 2020. And I'm sure we'll be fluid in our decision whether it would be still a virtual meeting or an in-person meeting. I kind of tend to believe we'll still be in a virtual mode during that period of time. No biting that. That's not for chewing. And, um, the other thing that I, I did want to again thank Professor Abramowitz and Dr. Chen for their commitment and their support and during their terms on, on the board. We certainly appreciate it and I uh, can't thank you enough. Um, are there comments from anybody in the audience um, who wants to speak at this time? This is Dale from Technology Recyclers. I think this is probably the first time in many years I sat through uh, one of these whole meetings. I applaud you on uh, the efficiency and the work uh, that you did and your methodology. So uh, thank you for your uh, the work that you're doing on all of our behalves. Thank you, sir. Uh, speaking on behalf of the board, we appreciate your comments. Yep, thank you. Deanna, are we missing anything else? I don't think so. Um, we definitely, as you mentioned, um, next meeting, November 5th, um, we will be fluid. Uh, we will definitely be offering for the near future or into the into next year um, some sort of hybrid option to if we do um, begin to move back to in-person meetings, um, we will still plan on offering a Zoom option. I, commend you for I have some exciting um, presenters that I hope to have for the next meeting, and we will do the recycling and e-waste reports, as mentioned. We will still report on those. It's great how you've been able to accomplish a meeting such as this, as well as you and all, all the support staff, and from Julia all the way down to the board members. Um, this has been interesting. It's, I think it's been effective. Um, it gives us so many options to protect those who are at a higher risk category moving forward. So thank you very much for getting all the approvals, whether it's from legal or wherever to, to accomplish this. We certainly appreciate it. Um, any other Meeting notes from any of the board members? Bruce, I just want to say something, if I may. Absolutely, Professor. I just, I, I don't know if you everybody saw what I put in the chat, but I really do appreciate being on the board. I want to thank everybody who served on the board. 
the current board and, and everybody from the past, the whole staff from item. I've worked with people from item, like Tom for seems like ever. <laughs> and, and all the legislators have been involved from the state. Um, it's really been a, an enjoyable experience all these years. And it's been quite a few years, uh, Bruce, I think you'll acknowledge that. And for those of you who don't know, yeah, this is really me without a beard. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Harvey. Um, it's, uh, may, I ask, may I ask, Harvey, are you resigning um, from the board or has your term expired? Or what? I've been told my term has expired. You've been told. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And again, we want to make sure that we welcome him. With Harvey's, Harvey's absence leaves and Dr. Chen's absence, some big shoes to fill. So... Ms. Hack Hackman, Mr. Lutz, Mr. Noonan, and Ms. Whitehead. Um, we welcome you, um, but we're going to have to fill the, the workload that um, Dr. Chen and Ms. Professor Abramowitz put forth. So welcome. You know, get and I, I welcome the new member. They're gonna, and it's a very good learning experience. You find out things that you didn't know before, that's for sure. I would like to also thank all the other representatives uh, for their support of the program. Um, again, it was a great funding year, great application year. Let's try to get that extra money back. And Julia, you know, we'll leave that in your hands. So thank you very much. Thanks, Harvey and Dr. Chen. Enjoyed working with you guys. Likewise. Well, thank you all. I really enjoy working with this group and uh, I wish the best of the board. <clears throat> all right, with that, I believe that it concludes our business for today. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Okay, I'll make the motion. I'll second. <laughs> and a second by then, Mr. Chen, okay. thank you very much. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all very much. Have a very safe and enjoyable rest of your day. And we'll see you again in November. Thank you. Thank Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. And Deanna. <laughs>